was interesting that we were you put the uh, we were trying to integrate the Fusion I/O driver into FreeNAS, broke the whole setup, and so Josh set up uh, a, a FreeBSD you know install with the, the Fusion I/O driver, and then moved the Zill and the L2R over to the uh, the Fusion I/O, and just without any tuning on their lower end card, we were getting you know 50 percent better database performance than we would. Yeah, we were getting some. We we had a very similar set. It was a system with a LSI HBA, had four 10,000 RPM SAS drives, nothing really special there. And uh, just by, and we put that Fusion I.O. card in, and of course that's a pretty expensive piece of hardware, but just by doing that, uh, sequential performance went up about 50%. Um, just by doing that one change, random, random I.O. performance <clears throat> went so that when I was running I/O zone, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> when I was running I/O zone, you couldn't even watch the output; it was so fast. You know, it, it would just oh, 65, 64 megs. Now we'll we'll wait for a second. So, um, even at that sequence, you know, the read-write performance was going to 400, 500 megs a second without any tuning. I, I pit it up against my Postgres database server at work that has hardware RAID and six 15,000 RPM SAS drives in a RAID 10 and is a pretty hot machine. And, and that setup with, with a RAID Z on the HBA and an L2ARC and Zill moved over to the Fusion I.O., it was 50% faster out of the box. And that was without any tuning. It was just, let's see what this does. And it was 50% faster. And so we estimated the cost of the disk subsystem was about 50% more, but that's without any tuning. And the, you know, the database server at work, of course, we got a lot more out of it, but that was four days of someone's time tweaking and tuning and testing and stuff like that. So uh, we're, there's a lot of possibilities. And I think one of the things that, that I've noticed with ZFS is um, the returns you get out of it are what sort of time you're willing to sink into it. There's a lot of things you can tune and tweak and try. And, and you know what works for you might not work for somebody else. I've had some changes that I've said, hey, this worked really well for us. And somebody else will go, that was the worst thing we ever tried, actually. We had a 30% degradation when we did that. You're stupid. How could you possibly? And it's like, come look at my workload. You know, I don't know what to tell you. So one of the things I would like to see, of course, down the road, and I think we will see as ZFS matures, is it will auto-tune for this sort of stuff, you know, so that it can build some sort of heuristics of, oh, you're doing this, well, we'll do this, so that it doesn't take somebody three days to ring it out. Uh, right now, you know, I look at it, you know, ZFS didn't get into FreeBSD, it's been in it for three years. You know, UFS, the, the file system installs to, was invented in the 80s. You know, which one is going to be more, you know, it's, well, 30 years, you know, somebody's been, people have been tweaking that. So I think in the next couple of years, we're going to see ZFS really start to shine as far as, yeah, this is real and this is not going away. And we need to sink some time into configuring this so we don't have people sitting there making their best guesses at this for three days. So, <laughs> sir. Freenas is free. What's in it for your company? Well, <laughs> well, let me tell you about that. We actually, the reason I stepped in uh, is I'm a member of the FreeBSD project as well. I have systems sell servers, but our entire corporation is based on FreeBSD uh, on the servers, on the desktops. Uh, most of our customers are FreeBSD, and we used FreeNAS for about five, four years before we stepped in, and uh, it was just a corporate decision of, hey, we use this, we don't want it to go away, and we might as well not end up doing all of the work We'll do what we do and then give it back to the community. So, you know, not much in it. But of course, we'll, we've been selling free NAS embedded uh, servers for a while, and we'll continue to do that. It's the same, you know, for us, it's just a server sale, and we, we uh, install and configure the, the free NAS uh, setup for you. It, a lot of this is, um, you know, free, free BSD is really, it started out as a commercial thing for me, you know, my first. One of my first jobs when I got into IT in 95 was migrating, helping an ISP migrate from, from a commercial operating system to FreeBSD. And it, it sort of, at the time, FreeBSD wasn't a very mature product. You know, it was only two or three years old. And, and they were just on the cusp of saying, 
you know, this is just usable for us. And so we were doing a lot of fixes and a lot of patches and pushing things upstream, and that, that became sort of a, a an arrangement that I never got out of, right? I mean, I, it's like I, the job with the ISP is long gone, but I'm still contributing to FreeBSD. And, and so I joke, you know, to Matt, who's my boss, sometimes I'll go, you know, sometimes what I do for work is so much fun, I would do it for free. Oh, that's right, I, I did do it for free for 15 years, you know? So, so in some degrees, we're very passionate about BSD. Um, and IX Systems is very passionate about BSD. We, we use it for everything. Our desktops, our servers, you know, it's mostly a lot of what we sell has FreeBSD to FreeBSD consumers. Um, and, and, and so in some ways, in some ways, what we're doing is just because we, did, we don't want to see it, you know, go some other way. You go, oh, well, there's another loss for FreeBSD, you know, there's another thing that went away. So. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening, and thanks for coming.